Welcome back. I'm Michelangelo Cidarelli on Sirius XM Progress 127, and I have in studio with me right now Blake Skellerup. He is a speed skater, and he's from New Zealand, was in the 2010 Winter Olympics, finished 16th in the 1,000 meter in Vancouver, hoped to be in the 2014 Sochi Olympics. He did not qualify. He did talk a lot about these Olympics and his hopes and spoke as an openly gay athlete, uh, speaking about the anti-gay law in Russia and had hoped to go there and was very brave talking about making a statement and being openly gay. And if they, uh, you know, were going to say anything, well, he was going to face whatever consequences that he was... uh, going to have to face and uh, really got a lot of attention. Certainly we've talked about him on the show here and uh, certainly many of you may have read about him and uh, now he is here in the studio. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So uh, you were obviously hoping to uh, be uh, in Sochi, um, obviously disappointed that you weren't able to uh, be there for the games. Talk a little bit about that and what happened. Yeah, obviously disappointed not to be uh, heading towards Sochi or heading to Sochi at the moment. I had qualifying in November, one competition in Italy and one actually in a city called Kolomna, which is about 90 minutes outside of Moscow. And in order for me to make it to the Olympics, I had to be top 32 in the world. And unfortunately, I finished 33rd overall. That's that's so tough, isn't it? It's... it's uh a hard one, right? Yeah, it, it was hard to be so close to to making it and to being in Sochi. But I, I did everything that I could. It was uh, a hard four years post-Vancouver. I struggled a lot with funding and support and finding a place to train. But I still managed to, to pull through it and get as close as I did. Well, I'm an Olympian already. I, I skated in Vancouver, so you can't take that away from me at all. Absolutely true. And, uh, of course, uh, you've been uh, somebody who has really used that status as an Olympian, speaking out uh, on behalf of uh, gay rights uh, as an openly gay athlete. Talk about your reaction. You early on talked about how uh, you certainly were opposed to a boycott. Uh, you certainly thought people should go. You would go if you qualified. Uh, but you also talked about being out. And, you know, more of what we hear from Russia, uh, it's been a mixed message, but it certainly doesn't seem like they're going to put up with people being very outspoken. Well, you just have to look at the statements from the mayor of Sochi yesterday saying that there is no gay people in Sochi. Right. And and statements like that are, they're damaging to begin with. Well, there are two gay clubs and various gay organizations in the city. Yeah, that's right. And there was a report on on, uh, how they have cabaret events uh, during the week and each night and it's filled with like 200 gay people in Sochi. They're definitely there. And what I feel personally is trying to be done by the, I guess, the officials of Russia is it's just basic oppression. They're trying to deny the fact that gay people exist in their country and they're denying the youth the, the education that they need on something that they will be identifying with, and that is as LGBT people. Yeah, and it, it, it's so uh, unfortunate that it, it's come to this where everybody is talking about either the security issue, which seems to have become a very big concern now, Uh, families of uh, some of the athletes saying they're not going to go because they're uh, afraid of terrorist threats. Um, Obviously, um, that is a very real fear, Uh, but also that it's focused so much on um, the anti-gay law and not on, well, speed skating, what you want to focus on in other sports. It's disappointing in that fact. The main reason, there's two reasons that I spoke up. The first is that I'm an Olympian. And as an Olympian, I believe 100% in what the Olympic movement means. It's about diversity. It's about friendship. It's about peace. It's about education. And it's about excellence 
in sport and excellence through sport. These laws in Russia do not align with the Olympic movement in any way. And it was upsetting for me to be heading towards an Olympics in a country that has such hateful laws in place. The Olympic Games is an event where the world comes together and they celebrate all of those morals and values of the Olympic Games. And for those laws to be introduced in February of 2013 was basically the Russian government's way of saying, we've got the Olympics, but we don't believe in what they stand for in any way. How do you feel about, you know, obviously there's been a lot of debate uh, within the LGBT community. Uh, Harvey Firestein said there should be a boycott. People shouldn't go. Uh, others like yourself obviously saying no. It's about the athletes. Uh, a lot of activists focused on this now. Uh, a lot of attention focused. I just wrote a piece on Huffington Post about the um, sponsors, Coca-Cola, McDonald's and others. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, I look at it this way. If the Olympics weren't in Russia to begin with, the introduction of this law wouldn't have received the international attention and outcry that it has. It's, I guess, a, a quid pro quo in, a, quo in a way that the Olympics are there. The ability for the Olympic movement to, to highlight what it stands for is going to help this movement in Russia. It's going to it has an opportunity to highlight LGBT people. It has an ability to highlight LGBT values. And it definitely has a big opportunity to, to showcase uh, gay athletes like myself and like many others who will be in Sochi, some of them out, some of them not out. We aren't a, a hateful. We aren't threatening in any way. We're just normal people who love somebody of the same sex. That is it. You had planned, if you uh, had gone, to to be out, you were going to wear something that signified it? or uh, Tell us what you were planning to do and what do you think others might do? So my plan was to wear a rainbow pin, which was created for the 2012 Olympics in London. It had the Olympic rings and the official uh, London um, logo on it with a, a pride flag. Very simple. Uh, and it was approved by the International Olympic Committee, was official piece, an official piece of merchandise for those games and is now an official piece of, um, a, a, you know, it's history. It was a, a big deal for the Olympic Games and the Olympic movement. And so I was going to wear that and I think I was within my rights to do so because it was something that the IOC approved. And that was going to be my way of, I guess some would say defiance, but my way of showing my support uh, of, for the LGBT people of Russia and the world, and also my way of, of showing something that I'm very, very proud to be. You didn't come out until after the 2010 uh, Olympics uh, in Vancouver. What was that experience like, and, and what did you experience in terms of response to coming out? I struggled a lot from about the age of 16 to accept myself as gay and to figure out that I could actually be gay and in sports. There was no role models out there for me. There wasn't anybody that I could look up to and say, hey, I want to be like them one day. But through time and through actually people coming out, the biggest the biggest thing for me was an Australian diver by the name of Matthew Mitchum. It was, he was so uh, nonchalant out, yes. yeah, at the 2008 Olympics. And that was one of the final steps of me realizing that I could be gay and be in sport. And I'd only come out to my family uh, six months before the Olympics in Vancouver, and I wasn't quite ready to um, announce that during the Olympic Games, but I wasn't going to hide it either way. I had a boyfriend, and if somebody asked, I would have been truthful about it. Mm -hmm. And it was post those Games, uh, a day after I went up to Whistler where they had this uh, organization called Pride House. And there they had this exhibition of these college athletes here in the States who were gay and open about it. And it was inspiring to me to see that these people were so proud of who they are and proud to be in sport. And it was from there that I decided to, to share my story in an Australian magazine and come out. And since then, it's been an, an amazing thing for me, amazing thing. So many new fans and supporters and everybody has been extremely positive. I haven't had a single piece of negative feedback in mm -hmm. any way. Was there uh, a fear, and I wonder if there's a fear, particularly in certain sports like speed skaters, you know, it's supposed to be 
you know, macho or, you know, you like, I mean, Saturday Night Live did a skit. I don't know if you saw the other night um, where they talked about, you know, the, the heterosexual Olympics now. And then they had figure skaters <laughs> who were heterosexual and, you know, they kept falling on the ice. I mean, the, the obviously the stereotype is that the figure skaters are all gay. It, it, talk about speed skating and, and sort of you know, what is kind of expected or, or what, you know, how that felt. The, I mean, speed skating is a great sport. It's a fast sport. It's a, a dangerous sport. And you, it, it's a, it's kind of difficult for me to talk about. I mean, I believe that sport is, is a masculine environment, most definitely. Um, but that doesn't mean that you, you, can't be 100% masculine. I find myself, I have uh, effeminate actions and I think I'm, you know, 50% effeminate and I think I'm 50% masculine and I'm proud of that. Um, but speed skating is a rough sport and you need to be the, that macho person because at the end of the day, you've got to beat that person across the line. You need to have that edge on them. And if they think you're weak, then they can use that to your advantage. But I'm gay. Everybody in my sport knows I'm gay, and they definitely don't see my sexuality as a weakness. Mm -hmm. What's next for you uh, now? You're you didn't qualify for these Olympics. You've been training uh, in Canada, uh, in Calgary. Talk a little bit about what's next for you. Yeah, it's a I guess a, a transitional period of my life now. I have been speed skating for 18 years, and I, I don't believe I have it in me to, to continue for another Olympics. The, the support isn't there for my country and I have a greater desire to do something else. I want to continue on this path that I've been going down um, since June, since really uh, the world took notice of these laws in Russia. Um, th there's some change out there that, that definitely needs to come and I want to be someone who is uh, bringing about that. Uh, I'm going to head back to New Zealand pretty soon and take some time out with my family. Haven't really lived in New Zealand uh, properly for the last eight years. So it'd be good to get home, see my family, spend some time with them, and then uh, work on the things that I want to change and work on the people that need the help. But New Zealand, of course, just passed marriage equality um, not even a year ago, just uh, last year. Yes, and in October. Yeah. Well, it's been enormous that you spoke out, uh, certainly. You've done a lot um, already, so we look forward to uh, what you may be continuing to do. And uh, it, it, for you, really, um, I, I think will be seen as a great transition. You now have a passion, something you spoke up about, and uh, it's done a, a great thing for a lot of people. Well, yesterday here in New York City, I got to meet with a group of exiled Russian teenagers. These kids have had to leave their country, their family and their friends, because they're afraid of being themselves. So they've come here to America to live a free uh, and open life where they are secure and that their safety isn't threatened in any way. And that is a sad situation, and those people need help. So many pe people in Russia need help. And uh, it is up to us to help them and to get that country into a situation that is equal. Mm -hmm. And are, were you hearing from them some of their fears of what's going to happen even after these Olympics now? Well, they're, they're afraid that after the Olympics happens that the world is going to forget about them. And I don't think that will be the case. What you're seeing around the world is uh, as, as America slowly starts to get more states with marriage equality. Um, the world is wakening up to this issue. My country, New Zealand, the UK, uh, passed uh, marriage equality last year. And, you know, we're not looking at that for Russia. We're just making sure that the people are safe, that their laws can change to protect those people. Mm -hmm. And that is the first step because these people aren't protected and they aren't safe. Mm -hmm. Well, great having you um, on the show and in, uh, in studio. Thank you for coming in. Great. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, Blake Skellerup, who is a speed skater, and he is an Olympian. He had uh, participated in the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. We are back in a couple of minutes. This, this, this is the Michelangelo Senior Ellie Show on Sirius XM.